and help me to develop it. So I hope you'll find that same thing tonight. Suzanne not only validates this as reality, but helps you to understand how it works and find a little bit of it in yourself. How about a big hand for Suzanne? Good evening. Let me just get set up here for a second. I just flew in today from Florida. I've been on the road for six months with my husband, taking the messages of hope around the country, home for one week, and then flew up here to do this, and I'm so excited to be here. This is my absolute favorite thing to do, is to share with all of you this greater reality that I never knew existed until about 10 years ago, and now I'm so deeply immersed in it, this is my passion. And so to get to share it in a safe environment like this is a treat. What do I mean by safe? You, you're not going to be sitting here like this all the evening saying, who is this woo-woo person? I like to tell people that woo-woo is relative, and as you'll find out. Okay, Kim, you want to get those slides going? All right, I'm not going to be uh, boring you with slides. They're just going to back up what I have to share with you tonight. A lot of people said, is this your mother? She was laughing right now. This is my dear friend, Brenda. If any of you follow my work, I've been talking a lot about Brenda for the past several months. Brenda passed to the other side May 9th. May 9th, in the evening, Brenda came to me so clearly she stunned me. Her soul did. And she came with many messages, and the most important one saying, I'm still here. I just woke up. It was just like blinking. What was so stunning to me about Brenda coming so quickly after she passed is that unlike when I do readings and bring through spirits who I have never met, their thoughts sound like my thoughts. But with Brenda, it is her voice. It's her inflections. I feel her presence so strongly. So that when she came through to me, that very first night, just hours after she passed, I just started typing what she was saying, basically taking transcription from Brenda because she wanted me to share this with our mutual group of friends to say, I just blinked. How could I have died? I'm just right here. I shed that body. And so as she's speaking to me, I'm thinking, there's no evidence in this. I know this is Brenda. But if I share this with people, they're going to say, yeah, that's nice, Suzanne, you could make that up. Because I know how I used to be. I know how important evidence is. So I didn't even say this to Brenda mentally. I'm just writing, and at the very end of this little monologue she gave me, she says to me, like my boa, just like that. And I typed that, and I typed the word, what? Just so I'd remember to write my questioning of what is she talking about and then into my mind she put the thought ask our mutual friend Lynette Lynette will know what this is about there's your evidence this is me <laughs> so I typed all this up it was 9 30 at night I had a very tiring day and I sent it by email to Lynette and said what's up with the boa and I went to bed but I woke up at 2 30 in the morning checked my email and Lynette's response started with O-M-G, which is just so awesome to see that. And Lynette proceeded to tell this story that she and Brenda, knowing that Brenda was, had received a terminal diagnosis in the final stages of cancer, talked a lot about death and what she might expect. And they talked about the fact that Lynette was absolutely positive that this, this what we call a body, Lynette calls it a meat suit. And she said, Brenda, I know that when we get to the other side, we shed our meat suit, but then we just step back fully into our magnificence. And Lynette told this story that she felt exemplified her belief that this is what the afterlife is like. She said that when she, Lynette was a little girl from Oklahoma, seven years old, her parents took her to New York City. This was a big deal. And she was excited because they were going to see a play with the woman that she thought was the greatest person on earth, Zsa Zsa Gabor. 
okay? She was just the ultimate in class and glamour. And they went in this play. In this play, Zsa, Zsa was this frumpy farm girl. She's like, where is my Zsa, Zsa? She was so disappointed. She was crushed. Her whole dream about what is, what her, who her superstar was just came tumbling down. And they left the theater, and they were wandering around the district a little. And as they went back, towards their hotel. They walked down the alley past the theater, and the door opened, and out steps. Change the slide? No, wait, go back. Go back, please. There we go. That's Zsa Zsa. <laughs> out steps Zsa, Zsa in all her finery, boa and all. And Lynette said to Brenda, this is what I know it's like when we shed our meat suit. We can act in this world as a teacher, a counselor, a farmer, a social worker, a trash collector. It doesn't matter. But when we finally shed our meat suit and we step through the veil, we emerge in all our magnificence, boa and awe.